Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Understandably, COVID-19 has changed our world already in ways we could hardly imagine just a few weeks ago. Our daily lives have been impacted. Many of us have friends and family that are battling this illness, either by falling sick or really through our own efforts and doing what we can within the technology and healthcare industry to make a difference. Certainly, the majority of my days for the last few weeks have been spent focused on delivering rapid response solutions to healthcare organizations to help in this battle that is really going to test and shape our generation. But it's with that in mind that I believe it's incredibly important for us not to lose sight of the other public health battles taking place within our country. Now, as much or more than any other time, addiction, specifically opioid addiction, is an issue that affects all of us and our communities. Again, we're really so honored that you took your time out of your day today to learn about the work we're doing in this space to make a positive impact. Now let's go ahead and get started. So I'm looking forward to sharing our partnership at UT Austin with Maven Wave and Google Cloud. Um, today we'll be chatting about the combating the opioid epidemic in the state of Texas. I am Dr. Casey Claiborne, a research scientist and assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Texas Dell Medical School. And my name is Harrison Sontag. Uh, I'm a principal consultant in our healthcare practice at Maven Wave, work 100% with healthcare clients, be they uh, providers, payers, or life sciences customers throughout North America. So it's no surprise to anyone that we have an opioid crisis in the United States. What's interesting about this is that we're starting to see an overdose crisis with stimulants and cocaine um, increasing as well. And so we don't necessarily just have an opioid problem. Um, we have a drug problem in the United States. In 2017, over 70,000 people died from opioid overdoses in the United States alone. And like I mentioned before, we're seeing a rise in stimulant, cocaine, and meth overdoses um, within the last five to 10 years as well. Next slide. In the state of Texas, this is significantly important um, as opioid overdoses have really um, not gained a lot of attention. One of the problems in Texas that we've found is that um, we really have an insufficient way of tracking overdoses across the state, both fatal and non-fatal overdoses, and then also determining which drug the overdose is associated with, so whether it's an opioid overdose, a methamphetamine overdose, or a cocaine overdose. Texas is unique as well. Um, when we look at the entire state, we see that only 15 counties out of the 254 counties have a medical examiner who performs autopsies. That means that most of the autopsies performed in the state of Texas are by Justice, uh, Justice of the Peace, who doesn't receive any training in substance use um, or overdose. Um, and so oftentimes, a lot of the overdoses are not captured um, within the data that we currently track. We also can tell that by the state of Texas, there's a vast rural area um, where data tracking and monitoring oftentimes is non-existent um, and severely insufficient. And so we do believe that opioid overdoses are underreported. Um, and we also know that methamphetamine overdoses is on the rise in Texas. What we tend to see in Texas is that we have multiple disjointed reporting systems that oftentimes impede our ability to um, draw strong conclusions on overdose data um, and tracking throughout the state. And there's a lot of fear and a lot of stigma um, that results in unreported overdoses, with some people estimating um, who work in this population that approximately 90% of overdoses in Texas go unreported. Next slide. So why is this project important? Um, we need a tool that is really generalizable across both urban and rural communities that tracks both fatal and non-fatal overdoses that involves the community of people who use drugs and their social networks. Um, but what's really important is that we're protecting this population um, and that we meet HIPAA compliance and also other federal regulatory requirements that are associated with data sharing. We also need to engage key stakeholders across the community. So this includes our EMS teams, our law enforcement teams, our healthcare providers, people who use drugs, and then also lay people who come in contact with individuals who may have overdosed. Um, oftentimes, people who use drugs and lay people 
do not report overdoses. We know a lot of times EMS and law enforcement are never called for overdose um, issues. And so being sure that we're engaging people who use drugs and then also lay people within the reporting system is essential to increase, improving the gap um, in reporting across Texas. Next slide. So our goal from this project is that we develop a digital ecosystem um, that will improve statewide data related to overdose um, and eventually be able to do predictive analytics that will prevent overdose and increase healthcare system efficiencies. Um, we hope that we'll be able to optimize expenditure based on data-informed analytics um, through state funding that will um, result in data-driven decisions for um, ex uh, determining where naloxone is distributed, as well as determining where we um, really invest our state resources for substance use prevention efforts and substance use treatment efforts. Next slide. So the overall goal of this project is to develop a generalizable and sustain sustainable <laughs> digital ecosystem to improve opioid overdose reporting, tracking, and prevention across the state of Texas. Next slide. Project Connect is funded by the Texas Health and Human Services so Health and Sorry. <laughs> um, Project Connect is funded by the Texas Health and Human Services Commission. Um, and our goal is to develop a digital platform that will improve surveillance tracking um, and also develop an administrative dashboard so that we can um, create easy reports um, and dis disseminate these reports to key stakeholders. Um, across the state level, as well as within the addiction network um, across the entire state of Texas. We also plan to develop mobile application plugins that are tailored to specific key stakeholders um, to improve reporting. So this includes law enforcement, um, healthcare professionals, um, including emergency room departments, um, and then also people who use drugs and lay people. And then finally, our goal is to improve data integration across health information exchanges that will help improve the self-reported um, data that we're collecting through the mobile application pl plugins and make sure that the data that we are collecting is accurate and most up-to-date in as much um, real-time as possible. Next slide. So in year one, our plan is to utilize community-informed research methods across five different pilot sites in Texas. Um, we'll be looking at three urban communities um, associated with Austin, San Antonio, and El Paso. And then we are looking at two rural communities that are still to be determined in the state of Texas. Um, based on community-informed research methods, we'll be pulling together community advisory boards in each of these five pilot sites. Um, and working with the community advisory boards to really understand unique aspects associated with each of these communities that will inform development of a generalizable and sustainable ecosystem um, across the entire state. We'll be conducting uh, a rigorous qualitative research arm within the study that includes focus groups with each of the key stakeholders named above, including EMS, law enforcement, um, and lay people. And we'll be conducting individual interviews with people who use drugs and harm reduction coalition leaders. This will give us a deep dive into some of the pain points that these key stakeholders currently <clears throat> experience related to inaccurate data, and then also challenges with data reporting and data management. And then we'll be conducting a quantitative research arm that will survey people who use drugs, um, and then people within that community, such as gatekeepers, and secondary needle exchangers who will help to inform our research protocol um, and our uh, development of the digital ecosystem. Some of the goals associated with year one are understanding gaps in reporting, building trust with key stakeholders and pilot sites, collecting data to inform the digital ecosystem development, and developing an implementation protocol. We understand that a lot of the challenges that um, other states have are not similar to the state of Texas. And so one thing that we're trying to do is really learn from other states who have done this well. 
So Rhode Island, for example, is a state who has really done a great job in developing a strong digital reporting system for their state. What we're trying to do in year one is to understand what we can um, extrapolate from what Rhode Island has done into the state of Texas, but also understand what the pain points are specific and unique to Texas that we can then build upon. We know that gaining trust among key stakeholders in the pilot sites, particularly among harm reduction coalition leaders, as well as people who use drugs, is essential um, to the success of the implementation component of this project. Um, and then we'll be developing a strong implementation protocol based on these data um, so that we can ensure successful implementation across the entire state and sustainability for the long term. <clears throat> Next slide. So our long-term goals from a research standpoint are to develop a digital ecosystem that improves surveillance and prevents fatal overdoses um, across the state of Texas. We also want to understand gaps in re data reporting so that we can improve um, our data collection metrics based on these gaps. And then we want to explore methods of including people who use drugs in data reporting. This is a novel um, <clears throat> decision to include people who use drugs in data reporting and then also lay people. And so what we're trying to do is understand some of the ethical considerations um, and some of the barriers that they may experience related to reporting and also to really do a deep dive into understanding what people who use drugs concerns are um, if they do report overdoses and then how we can develop a system that actually benefits this population um, to incentivize that they report because we know that this population um, is key to improving the gaps in reporting across the state. From a technology side, we want to integrate with EMR data over the long term, um, as well as other health information exchanges um, that are statewide. This will increase the accuracy of the data reporting metrics. We also are interested in utilizing um, predictive analytics that will inform prevention of overdose um, across the state and decrease our fatal overdose rate. We'd also like to identify geographic hotspots in real time so that we can better utilize our resources um, and make decisions in real time that benefit um, patients from uh, overdosing and then also allow access to treatment um, during those windows of opportunity. And then we would also like to explore social determinants of health within the context of overdose across the state of Texas in both rural and urban communities. Next slide. <clears throat> um, Harrison, is this yours? Sure, happy to take this, and thank okay. you so much, uh, Casey. Uh, as I'm sure all you can tell, it's such a such an important project. I'm absolutely honored uh, to play a small part. Um, with partnering with uh, with Casey and her team on this incredible work that they're doing, um, but you know to break it down in terms of the actual project, in year one, uh, our focus is going to be creating this Google Cloud environment and their and the digital platform uh, for the opioid reporting and tracking. Um, in in addition to building this actual platform. Uh, we're going to be building out a general reporting application and website that will be utilized by those initial five pilot sites, the three urban and two rural, uh, for actual reporting of the overdoses in Narcan administration. Uh, additionally, uh, we are going to be implementing an administrative dashboard for the actual data visualization, utilizing uh, Looker, uh, doing things, as Casey mentioned, as related to, uh, to geo hotspotting uh, in, order to, um, uh, in order to provide reporting on the data that has been collected. Now, years two through five, uh, pending a successful year one, is when we would start looking at the tailored law enforcement applications, bringing in external data sources, uh, including social determinants of health from Google, and exploring advanced analytics uh, as related to predictive analytics to potentially start to prevent some of these overdoses uh, from happening. In year three, uh, our plan is uh, to build out the tailored opioid user application and potentially incorporate uh, telemedicine into the application specific for 
individuals that might not have access to care otherwise. In year four, the plan as of now is to uh, to build out the tailored healthcare professional application and layperson application. And by year five, our goal is for statewide implementation and rollout uh, to be completed. Next slide. And so when we were designing the approach in terms of how to get started, uh, as I mentioned, it's a five-year project and we're just talking about year one right now. Uh, it was incredibly important that we take the correct approach in order to maximize the likelihood for successful adoption. Ensure that we built the foundation of this platform though, not just to meet the year one deliverables, but in a way that ensures that the platform is secure and as and incredibly scalable as we look to those additional applications in years two through five, the different analytics solutions that we hope to be able to build out uh, and that we're planning to incorporate in the future along with the increased adoption throughout the state past those five pilot sites. Um, the two main areas that we have broken down the program into relate to software development, where we are beginning with the Maven Wave Accelerator program, working with UT subject matter experts from Casey's team and UX experts from Maven Wave, where they are designing the user experience to really ensure the best possible adoption of the app, uh, actual application being built. Now, simultaneously, we have a parallel track with the platform build on uh, GCP, where we are beginning with our cloud foundation program to securely build out this GCP environment for University of Texas, really focusing on the foundational cloud components of setting up uh, an environment like this very properly from the beginning. Uh, related to security, networking, identity management, monitoring and billing in GCP, while training UT's uh, IT staff on Google Cloud and how to keep this operational uh, as it, it continues to scale throughout the years. Now, simultaneously with this Cloud Foundation implementation, we'll actually be building out the platform and GCP, again, so that is scalable not only for those additional workloads, but for the future data integration and analytics in the coming years. Next slide. So this gives a very high level view of the GCP architecture uh, that we are building to illustrate um, how we're building out this platform for scalability in the future. Now in year one, the data sources being ingested in the Google Cloud platform are primarily from the actual incident reporting uh, of the overdoses and Narcan administration uh, through the uh, initial mobile application and website. Um, now these will be stored in domain sandboxes in GCP that will then allow for data visualization uh, such as geo hotspotting and different reporting uh, that will be made available to the state via a looker dashboard uh, designed for admin access. Now in year two, uh, as you see with uh, with the different colors there, we will. That's when we are planning to begin to incorporate those additional data sources via batch and streaming uh, from uh, different uh, HIEs as well as other agencies, other data sources, potentially EMR data, uh, to incorporate in the platform, utilizing the healthcare API uh, and utilizing BigQuery for data analytics, and then AI platform and GCP uh, for the predictive analytics. Now, in subsequent years, as we mentioned, our goal is to build out these more tailored user applications specific for law enforcement uh, individuals and those healthcare professionals, particularly in the ER, EMS, and first responders, and then um, uh, actual opioid users and their families and friends uh, and lay people as well. And that data will then be captured and brought into the platform as well. Next slide, please. So in terms of our technical architecture, we're really taking an approach of define, control, and monitor. So as we've mentioned before, and I'll mention throughout the rest of this presentation, our base governance policies, are they're based on HIPAA requirements and customer-specific policies uh, that we are defining with uh, UT Austin and with the state. And we will be establishing control of these policies via automation. Uh, providing resource labels for classification of the data to allow for scalability as we're talking about incorporating other data sources throughout the years uh, and logging behavior and security posture. Now, in regard to the monitoring aspect, the focus will be concerning changing to changes to resources, access groups, and data access as you know this information is incredibly sensitive 
and we want to ensure that we're building out the right foundation uh, of this platform in GCP from the beginning uh, to take uh, absolute care of this uh, sensitive data. Next slide. Now, in terms of data management, uh, we will be ingesting streaming data uh, from cloud pub sub and batch data from cloud storage. Uh, the orchestration will be augmented with data enrichment services as needed. Uh, some of the things that we are building into the platform incorporate Google's vision API, uh, as well as de-identification de uh, of data through the data loss prevention API. Uh, importantly, we're implementing a cloud data catalog to be leveraged year one. Uh, to ensure compliance and to set a pattern for the future. Uh, the data warehouse will be BigQuery, and as I mentioned, we'll be using the healthcare API as the Firestore. Next slide, please. Uh, now, in terms of security, uh, obviously, again, it's it's paramount for, for MavenWave and Google Cloud for all of our projects, uh, but specifically with the sensitive nature of this data and this project. Uh, we're utilizing the latest uh, standard Google products uh, across three system access patterns related to external access, service-to-service -service access, and internal GCP access. Uh, the Cloud IAM will largely be implemented throughout the Cloud Foundation phase of our project, uh, where we're going to be working very, very closely with UT's uh, IT team uh, and Google setting up this, uh, this Cloud environment uh, correctly with those foundational elements from the very beginning. Next slide, please. So for the applications themselves, uh, one of the state requirements is ADA compliant UIs. Um, which we are going to be implementing for all applications and is a consideration that uh, is being discussed as part of our accelerator program, uh, designing the user experience with Casey and her team of subject matter experts. Uh, additionally, we're planning on utilizing uh, potentially geo coordinates uh, for this incident reporting. Uh, in order to uh, to add, uh, identify the locations, you know, specifically to help as it relates to uh, to geo hotspotting and the reporting that we plan on doing through the administrative dashboards and Looker. Uh, now, the Firestore uh, for primary data storage um, is what we're implementing in Cloud SQL Postgres for the application specific storage. Next slide, please. Now, in terms of our DevOps architecture, our approach from the beginning of this is to automate everything. Uh, we want to make this uh, this platform as uh, as as scalable as as possible, but while ensuring um, you know the correct compliance and uh, and implementation from the very beginning of this uh, this GCP environment. Uh, so these environments will actually be managed by Terraform. Uh, the integrate, test, and deploy cycles uh, will be triggered from Git work workflows. And very importantly, the security policies that we're building into this GCP environment will be enforced via Forseti. Next slide. So that's everything we have today. Thank you again so much for joining us today. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime if you have any questions, if there's anything we can do, I would absolutely be happy to discuss. Thank you all. Take care.